Hey guys, and welcome back to Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Brace yourself, guys. This and the next couple of parts after it are going to be pretty lengthy. So, Richie, what shall we start this part with? Got any tidbits about the Curious Village, except for the spoilers? Is it something that we've discussed previously before recording? I certainly hope so. <laughs> um, yes, the fact that we completely forgot to mention that Professor Layton and the Curious Village and the entire Professor Layton series is developed by Level 5 and published by Nintendo internationally. Um, I should also point out that what's really quite well frustrating but also quite cool is that so the original game came out in Japan February 15th, 2007. It then came out in America a year later, uh -huh. which tended to happen with most of the latent games until kind of around Miracle Mask as Run Legacy. Um, but what's really cool is that it came out in Europe November the 7th, 2008. Destiny! So perfect timing to do this particular commentary, I think. Sorry, I didn't mean to get as into that as I did. Well, this bull looks really sick. Maybe we should help him, guys. Horrible genetic experimentations fusing a man with a bull with an ash cloud. Now, all we need is a maze and we'll just be on point. Alternate joke. Man, Wily has seen better days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know he reminds me more of... Oh, God, is it Dick Dastardly? Yes. Wacky Racers? Yeah, I'm getting it. I, I get a huge Dick Dastardly vibe from that guy, yeah. Hmm. Uh. Uh, Raymond, Ramon, Raymond, whatever. Have you seen this cat we're looking for? The thing is with this chapter is that it's mostly just people go in, I might have seen the cat, I might not have done. Solve this puzzle and maybe I'll tell you. <laughs> That's literally what some of the characters of Miracle Mass say. Nothing in life's free, mate. Solve this puzzle first. I think that's pretty much every NPC in the entire franchise. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> in this game, it kind of makes sense in terms of, you know, everybody likes puzzles. It's a town that focuses on stuff. But then later on, they just kind of drop the pretense. Look, man, we got to put in puzzles in here somehow, and I'm not going to take money. What are you, nuts? So solve it. This puzzle involves working out how many people didn't get eaten by sharks. Good. I'm glad. It's it's very, very, very morbid. Later, don't care. Them, they're the ones who died. <laughs> it's okay, they're fictional puzzle people. They'll be fine. We can make more. Okay, answer she. Don't need any lib comments, thank you very much. The answer she is sometimes so sarcastic, it's brilliant. <laughs> like, is it Leighton saying that? Is it Luke? Uh, it's the voice of God. Let's just move on. Well, either way, the, the, the sass that is sometimes present in the, this franchise is just wonderful. It's... Oh. Hey, it's set in Britain. We call it wit over here. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> what is with Raymond's lips? He looks very ill. I had a math teacher like that once. What, with black lips? Was it lipstick? No, just big lips. No, no, it's not that they're big. It's that they're unhealthy colored looking. <laughs> Maybe he's a bit of a goth, or... An emo or grab kid or something, so you're going with the black lip gloss stuff. <laughs> Mr. Burns had an experimentational period, yeah. It just reminds me, I was talking to Helldragon earlier, we were setting up a recording session, and he said something, I forget exactly what, and I replied with gotcha, but it came out as gothka. I was like, oh god, <laughs> I'm in the Halloween mood already. <laughs> wow, you really enjoyed that. Yeah, I don't know, I'm having a bit of a semi-giggle fit at the minute, so... Oh, wow. He is officially <laughs> having a giggle. Marco looks like that kind of guy that you meet at a convention and you really don't want to meet Marco at a convention. Also, why are you asking a guy with sunglasses if he's seen a cat? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm thinking like Marco is like blind or something, but he doesn't have a cane or a seeing eye animal, so... Well, see, Luke, if you hadn't judged them by his cover like I would never have done, then you wouldn't be having this problem. <laughs> yes, Luke, follow Helldragon's example. You're right, that's that's actually a great idea. I, I agree. If you think the music sounds familiar, by the way, go back to what we were saying about who made the game, Level 5. They also made the Dark Cloud series, and I think it's most obvious there, the comparison. Neither of you have played the Dark Cloud games, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> I, I am trying to think of other Level 5 games I may have played. I want to say Rogue Galaxy, but I believe that's a Factor 5 game and not a Level 5 game. 
I think it might be level five, actually. Richie, could you do a little bit of fact checking for us, please? Checking for which game I I, I was just looking at soundtracky stuff and just going, oh, that's interesting. Okay, Rogue Galaxy, mate. I didn't like Rogue Galaxy that much. I'll just throw that out there. Yeah, I'm aware of that, Hell Dragon. Yes, Rogue Galaxy is developed by Level Five and published by Sony. Uh, so, what I kind of wanted to oh, fitting. So the composer for Rogue Galaxy and the Dark Cloud series and the Professor Layton series is Tomohito Nishiura. So that's why it all sounds very, very, very similar. Usually, I'd say that the kind of one-note style is a bit annoying, and you know, it could basically be put anywhere and it'd be the same thing. But I really enjoy it. I mean, I think sort of there are certain composers who have a style which really, really, really works, no matter what situation they apply it to. I mean, Yoko Shimomura is a prime example of that. Oh yeah. Although that said, I do well. I I will continue to slightly criticise her work in Kingdom Hearts for not taking inspiration from the Disney songs. Yes. But that 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 is her prerogative, and I will just go okay. I was so proud of myself when I actually solved this puzzle moments before Richie told me the answer to it. <laughs> I'm not even sure if that could be classified as a puzzle. It's more like common sense. Yeah, you can't stack it in the other chairs. Okay. Do you really need like? fucking brain power for this? I don't know. Well, if it can be classified as a puzzle, it's going in a lighting game. Where's the puzzle? How do I pay my taxes on time without having enough money to do so? Why don't you go solve that, Leighton? <laughs> Isn't that a riddle? I don't know what the hell it is anymore. <laughs> my first is in taxes, but not in canoe. What am I? Okay, this is just excessive right here. Do you know the answer to this one, Helldragon? Uh, four. You are not correct. It's three. Yeah, I kind of figured. I mean, this this is a really nice logic puzzle because it's just like, well, you've got to think that three candles have already been extinguished, so those are the ones that aren't going to have melted down by the end of the night because they weren't continuing to be lit. You get all that. I think I did. Okay. Well, that's why we have Richie here to take care of this shit, because I sure am not brought here for my knowledge. Seriously, mate, thank you for explaining the logic of some of these puzzles. I'm just sitting here going, oh god, what am I going to have to make my next sassy remark to keep the commentary <laughs> going? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's basically the only type of thing that I'm good for, is sort of background information and sort of logic -y stuff. Where the fuck are my matchsticks? Shut up! <laughs> I knock you out! Right in fucking mouth! Okay, he's not mad about matchsticks, he's mad about someone taking the crank for the bridge, I believe? Indeed he is, and if I recall correctly, you do eventually, well, you, you have to find out eventually where the crank went and who took it. Very good movie, by the way, Crank. Haven't seen it. It wouldn't really be your type of film, I would think. What type of film is it? It is a balls to the walls action film. Well, you don't know if Richie might like that. <laughs> oh no, I've worked my way to a corner here. Here's a puzzle. How do you get out of this social faux pas? <laughs> oh, I used the strange gizmo. Up, up, and away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tom just floats off. Fuck y'all guys. <laughs> I'm done. I am so done. And of course, it wouldn't be an adventure game without collecting a bunch of useless shit you only use one time. That's a good point. Like, you could classify Layton as an adventure game. You're going about to different areas, you do a very low-key type of puzzles and such, and there's Claudia, so I guess we're going to tap on her. Yeah, tapping on the cat will definitely not piss it off. Funny you should say that. You're going to go farther? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's just waiting for what was about to happen. I think it happens in a few seconds. If I continue to talk, then maybe it will actually happen. Just stretch it out, man. Shut up, Luke! <laughs> God, later, not you too. And at this point, they kind of bring in Luke's uh, natural affinity towards animals, and it's sort of like... They treat it like this special power he has, and it doesn't work here, obviously. But... It just seems like he knows how to not freak the hell out when approaching an animal, which is a skill anybody can learn, really. 
Oh, is he embarrassed? Oh no, she rejected me. Well, no, she 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 scratched him. He's just like, ow, that hurts. I know, but it looks like he's blushing anime style. Oh god, this guy. Uh, uh. uh don't open your eyes. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to imagine, like, as I read these uh, lines, I'm trying to imagine how one would voice act them. Like, everybody probably has a distinct voice. Like, Deke is like, thanks, but no thanks. I like living. Did you see that ferocious beast? I don't know. I'm just making shit up. How do you think Deke would sound? Not like that. Oh, well, all right then. At least I am making the attempt. God, his mouth is huge. He could probably do better voice acting than me. Then again, he owns the person we're talking about here. The size of the mouth isn't relevant when it comes to voice acting. It's the... The chops, the vocal chops. I mean, I, I wonder, I mean, I don't know whether this is quite accurate, but I suspect that most of the people in St. Mister would probably have maybe a Yorkshire-ish accent. Or at least I want them to have a slightly Yorkshire-ish accent, because that would be hilarious. No, again, going back to Miracle Mask, I love the fact that Dalson, he kind of, he's like, H how does his accent go? Like, Leighton, what are you doing, like? What are you doing here, yes. Leighton? Ah, oh, that, yes, love him. What accent is that? I think that is sort of Yorkshire. It's Oop North, isn't it? Yeah, most, most... The thing that I really do like about the Layton series is that it does feature a lot of different regional accents, mm. even in text form. So, I mean, there's a guy in Pandora's box who I'm pretty sure speaks with... It's either a Geordie or a Yorkshire accent, because I think he uses words like pet mm. and so on and so forth, which is just like, oh my god. This will mean nothing to you, Hell Dragon. I assure you. I I can't move. I can't move. He's just standing there, ramrod still. What's going on? <laughs> when you poke him, he becomes alive. <laughs> of course, I'm looking at this guy. His name's Rodney. You know what I'm thinking of, don't you, Richard? Only fools and horses. Fuck yeah, buddy. Yeah, that uh, flew over my head. I admit. All the way over to England. It's a classic British sitcom. Ah, oh, I see. It, it's basically up there with, like, The Faulty Towers, and I think Open All Hours is another one, which, it, they're kind of, there's a couple of really, really big old British sitcoms that just pervade British culture. And, and they brilliant. just won't die! <laughs> well, yeah, because, I mean, you've got still Open All Hours now, I think, which is actually surprisingly alright. Oh, the new, like, the continuation of the story. Yes. Here's my answer. This is just a guess now. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Don't bank on this. <laughs> Another puzzle solved. Obviously, you won't be seeing us fail any puzzles, but if you get something wrong as Slayton, he actually pulls the brim of his top hat down over his eyes, which is a nice touch. God, even in my own game, this is embarrassing. Well, yes, because I mean, he's so ashamed because he's the guy who is able to solve any puzzle he likes. So to get a puzzle wrong is just like, oh dear, that is... Very, very, very embarrassing. Is that why he never takes off his hat? He's got a very cylindrical supercomputer that feeds all the answers directly to his brain. Well, it wouldn't be too out of place in this universe, I think. He's got a little, like, uh, you know, read-off printing out of his hat. At the strange gizmo we got looks suspiciously like a red rubber ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, we should probably talk about those kind of, the strange gizmos we've got, and also the painting scraps that, well, I think we picked up one so far, mm -hmm. but basically for completing certain puzzles you will get a new item. Either a strange gizmo, a painting scrap, or something else which we will come across I believe either at the end of this chapter or relatively soon afterwards. Go ahead, Mr. Layton! Sorry. Good. Basically you will pick up everything part way through through the game, so the strange gizmo will be completed first, then I believe you, or at least we're going to complete the painting scraps, and then we're going to complete the other thing. Mm -hmm. You can do it the other way around, depending on when you complete your puzzles, because there is a level of choice in how you tackle these things, 
because you may not pick up some puzzles until much later on, you may pick them up as soon as they appear, so it's up to you when you complete everything. Yeah, the game is actually pretty laid back about you not having solved every puzzle. There's requirements. There's like certain gatekeepers will say, ah, oh, no, Pet, you haven't, you haven't solved enough puzzles, sorry, you're going to have to go back and solve more. But for the most part, you don't have to get 100% completion to finish the game. I do like how back there when uh, Luke saw that hidden puzzle, he just straight up and said, there's a hidden puzzle here. Like it had a price tag on it that indicated such. I just love how bland and banal the uh, the text for the hidden puzzles are, because they're not story-based, so there's no reason to inject characterization into them. You know what they should have done? They should have just, like, randomly slotted in different accents just to take the piss out of things and just, like, go, oh, it's it's a hidden puzzle, it's bloody amazing! <laughs> They're just putting a different character on the screen instead of Luke. Oh, what's Stash and Scarf in doing here? <laughs> He's announcing a hidden puzzle! <laughs> <laughs> I see puzzle here. <laughs> Thank you, Franco. Speaking of Stash and Scarf, and... Hey friends, you want to see my bird collection? <laughs> I'm back again. Uh, every time I see the name Saint Mystere, I'm just taken aback at how silly it is. Cause I think it just literally means like Saint Mystery, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think it does. It, it literally does just mean Saint Mystery. <laughs> He's very wide, I just noticed. Hmm. I mean, the thing is, is that this entire series really does like its puns. It wears them on its sleeve, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, there are quite a few characters in this game in particular whose names are based on food. The answer is D, by the way. Thank you. Did you get that as it came up? No, I did it beforehand. I actually solved it right in there. <laughs> well, I, I edit these according to a sync point, so I'll know if you're lying. Alright. <laughs> yes, you, you were correct. Thank you, thank you. See, I'm glad you have me on the investigation team here. Also, uh, when we do hunt ghosts, as uh, people are apparently paid to do, I can be the guy who uh, takes aggro. Oh, yeah. Stashin, you're just... I fucking love this guy. Like, there are some of the NPCs in this game I just genuinely love. Like, we'll meet one later that people have compared me to, and I, I, I fucking love that guy, I got in there. <laughs> I know exactly who you're talking about. Oh, I can't wait for that moment. If you've ever been in, like, a British hotel or whatever, a very cosy one, like, in a coastal town, this is... This decor just immediately speaks to me. It does look nice. Like, I would really kind of like to spend time in a cosy hotel like this. Okay, you're overselling it here. You could have just said it was nice. What? I, I legitimately <laughs> meant that. Uh, it's like when you try too hard to be nice, you just end up staying in the night, even though you didn't want to spend any money. Oh, uh, well, okay, I guess I can spend one night, maybe, you know, not two, okay. We're just in awe of Beatrice's massive mouth here. I don't think it's necessarily the, the mouth that people are going to be ever so slightly in awe of. Um, <laughs> oh, shut up, Rishi. Just end it there. I, I want to use a, a phrase of Isun's from Okami. Um, a valley between two lofty peaks is probably slightly accurate. Or, for those of you who are also in England, HUGE tracts of land! Come on, somebody would have brought that up. I just did you guys a favor. <sighs> now, you see, when you said huge mouth, I expected another word to finish off that sentence. And then Richie goes ahead and does the thing I was expecting of you. <laughs> 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 oh, this is going to be a long pop. So yeah, the gist of this scene is Leighton and Luke want lodging for the night. Unfortunately, there isn't really room at the inn, so we're being stuck in the attic. And not given beds, actually. Oh yeah, the room feature, I forgot about this. Yeah, so this is the, the final little mini-game that we're gonna get. And what's hilarious is that for a, quite a while, Leighton gets everything and Luke has nothing. <laughs> well, if you do it right, you can always put the wrong stuff in Luke's room. It's true. Just treating his apprentice like total shit, man. To use a more recent example of a game that this is similar to, a little bit like Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer or whatever it's called. Yeah, 
I'd say that's probably an accurate comparison. This goes to me, Luke. I need it more. <laughs> Luke doesn't even get a fucking chair. You get the floor. Use that. A real gentleman can sleep anywhere. <laughs> sleep on the wall. That'll be your challenge. <laughs> real gentleman can sleep anywhere, but this one's sleeping in a feathery bed. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, uh, you have to. I, I'm sorry, Luke. Uh, I'm very uh, tired. Yes, that's a good one. Tired from using my brain to solve difficult challenges, so that's why I need to rest my entire body. You understand, right? I certainly hope you do. Good night. <laughs> oh, hell, Dragon. Okay, we basically have to move stuff around here to uh, encapsulate the ball of dust. Mm hmm. I really do like this puzzle. It, it's quite cool. Although it was like trying to say, stick the matchstick in the middle of the other matchstick. Yeah, I'm not very good when it comes to following orders sometimes. Much better at giving them. I mean, the thing is, is that it's a very difficult thing to explain something visually when one person knows exactly where something needs to go and the other person's trying to match that, but it's you can't quite always connect the two dots. And considering I mentioned dots, there are a few moments later on where we literally did have to try and connect dots. I was just like, right, the peg, like, on the top, far top left, connect that to the one that's, like, six <laughs> pegs down. Did you mean the bottom? The bottom on the right? <laughs> now I'm just trying to imagine the torment you guys went through communicating these answers back and forth. That actually sounds pretty funny. Yeah, yeah, we were using Skype's screen share feature, which is honestly like a godsend if you're trying to do like a live playthrough and your mates are like in another country. Uh, that's how Volt, Flame and I did Splatoon, that's how Johnny, Ryan and I did Shadow of the Colossus, and obviously how Richie and I recorded footage for this game, which took up 290 gigabytes on my computer, I think you'll find. Oh, this thing, like, DS games and 3DS games, the way that they get recorded because of various things end up being ridiculously huge. Also, I really, really do like this puzzle. It's actually really clever. It's You've probably seen like this type of puzzle before. It's one of those hidden image kind of things. Like, do you see a woman spinning right here, or do you see a woman spinning left? Is she spinning right round? Like a record baby. Right round, right round. Santa Claus is looking really angry today, though. A little bit haggard, yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, how many fucking Christmases has it been? My god. Santa's last Christmas. Yeah, that looks exactly like her. <laughs> hey, so he's a beautiful woman. Although that said, I, I seem to recall that when we recorded this, you, you couldn't spot the woman until after the puzzle was over. Thank you, Rishi. Just reveal my secrets and weaknesses to the world at large, why don't you? So is this how uh, uh, Leighton gets Luke to like not bother him? Well, my boy, uh, there's probably some hidden puzzles out there in like the yard, the road. I don't know. Just go find them. I'm writing this. There's a woman in that picture. <laughs> oh boy! And into the trunk it goes. Do they have a continental breakfast? I wonder. I would assume so, if only because pretty much most hotels or B&Bs or inns do serve a continental breakfast because it's kind of expected of them. Well, Luke, it appears we're completely hosed. Professor, I could probably jump across this. Um, why don't I throw you? Then we could judge the distance. This is your puzzle. How deep is the water and how well can you swim? <laughs> uh, Luke just like reaches out towards the car. If I can stretch my arm, almost, almost. No, I can't reach it. Now, the Leighton series it has a lot of goofy moments, but nothing is as goofy as Leighton referring to his car as the Leighton Mobile and playing <laughs> it straight. <laughs> oh come on, it's totally fine. He's a archaeology professor from Gresson Halley University. He's perfectly entitled to call his car after himself. That's, that's a totally normal thing to do. He's a professor of fucking archaeology, not like motoring and shit. Well, if he's perfectly entitled to call the latent mobile, we're perfectly entitled to laugh at him about it. Oh yes. Just because he's educated doesn't mean he isn't silly sometimes. No one is safe from the ridicule! Welcome to the real world! 
Okay, so this is sort of a puzzle, I guess. The first of many move things to exit. The, the, the slide puzzles in this game are like the bane of my existence. Here's your challenge. Um, try to see how many of these puzzles appear in Windows game packs that you get on your computer when you first buy it. Like, I could have sworn this was like a Windows Entertainment Pack game. Well, a lot of the puzzles in the latent series are just like legacy puzzles. They're just spins on the stuff that's been around for decades. Yeah, that's true. Well, yes, because, I mean, they are, if I can get the uh, information up... We, well, basically, the latent series has a puzzle master, and it has done pretty much... Well, it has done since the beginning. I'm trying to f remember what his name is, and failing miserably because things aren't popping me in the right place. Um, but it is... Well, the series is a direct result of Akihiro Hino's childhood love of Akira Tago's popular Atama no... Taiso series of puzzle books, which have sold more than 12 million copies to date in Japan. So, that's where all that all came from. We're out, Luke. Time to party. We're off to McDonald's, Luke. Oh, c c come now. Professor Layton would not go to a McDonald's. Of course, he'd go to Panera's. I'm sorry. He has to spend more money on quality things. <laughs> I'm not really sure you could judge that as correct or not. Because it's not like a yes or no puzzle or a puzzle of an answer. You're just guiding something to the exit. Yeah, of course you did it correct. Well, I mean, don't you have to get in, like, the least amount of moves as possible? Well, you can go over that. It's just a personal goal, I guess. I mean, I, I think that because of the way that the rest of the game is set up, you kind of have to say at the end of the day, it, yes, it's correct because you've solved the puzzle. All of the others are correct or incorrect types of puzzles so you kind of have to go well these are in the minority mm. so we just have to make it easy on ourselves it's him yes hell dragon i know who you want to talk about we'll <laughs> get to him shortly don't you worry and the ladies like talk to him first <laughs> so we shall <laughs> i love you Polly. i really do <laughs> you know when we were recording footage I was uh, saying to Richie, this guy reminds me so much of Helldragon A. You were funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny though. It's like my body shape mixed with Helldragon's personality and creates something even more terrifying. I know, it's like a horrible fusion of our worst qualities. Fusion! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Like, I love Polly so much because he fucking is angry all the time about absolutely everything. And it's just funny to watch him lose his shit completely. Mr. Apocalyptically Mad. He reminds me of one of the Mr. Men. Well, I mean, there is a Mr. Grumpy, isn't there? Yeah, there's a Mr. Grumpy, but he's not like Mr. Polly, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking Grumpy, I'm talking about two steps beyond, my friend. Well, I mean, there is also a Mr. Angry, I think. Well, in some of the Mr. Men shows, I know they kind of push some of the characters together and spread them out. It really does depend on that particular adaptation. This is a pretty fun puzzle. You basically got to get like A to A, B to B, without crisscrossing any of the other lines at all. Yeah, I, I really do love these types of puzzles because you do have to think carefully and because you aren't necessarily screwed over by trying things out, kind of, you are able to mess around and work your way to a solution. Because it will only solve once you've completed it, which is really nice. I think those are some of my favourite types of puzzles, like ones you can't exactly lose, but you st like, even with all the hint stuff, you still can't get the answer right away. Practical puzzles, I think, would be the term for it. Yes, I think that is probably the best way of describing them. I would say that basically everything gets more refined come Pandora's box, which is definitely much appreciated. Which I think is why I prefer the game, yeah, apart from the story, which I prefer. Although that's not to say Curious Village has a bad story. It's really mm. atmospheric and uh, oppressive because obviously we're stuck in the town, you can't leave. The characters are enjoyable, the music is great. The pacing is actually pretty decent as well. For a brief moment there, I thought Polly was going to explode again. Now that's a mystery worth investigating. 
I mean, it's, it's funny that you say that the music is great, because surprisingly, it received very mixed reviews from online sites, apparently, according to Wikipedia. Who are these online sites? So, squareenixmusic.com, which is obviously a really, really famous website. Is it? I don't know, I'm just sort of bullshitting my way through here. Okay. Uh, they, they gave the album 6 out of 10, calling it a rather bland collection of repetitive and similar music tracks from the game. Ah, okay, squareenixmusic.com. Okay, I'll just take your word for that. RPG fan music similarly stated, the soundtrack is simply too repetitive to be considered anything fantastic. Okay. I have no idea where these people are getting their opinions. I mean, yes, the music is somewhat repetitive, but it's got a very sort of... It's got a unique charm to it. I mean, you take one listen to that Professor Layton's theme and it's just like, I don't even care about the rest of the soundtrack. I am sold. Do you have it, Hell Dragon? The answer's power. Eight. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> thank you, thank you. My power isn't to solve puzzles. It's actually to look into the future and see what comes up. You're a liar! <laughs> Don't judge me, Leighton. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of that pop at the end of his little thing. <laughs> just like, just do that. I need to see a, a GIF animation of Leighton just thinking, pointing to the uh, viewer, and then says, You're an asshole! Or, your opinion is wrong. Have you not seen that edit where the last bit of that animation is him flipping you off? <laughs> I don't think I have. Yeah, there's a term for what Paulie is suffering from. It would be kind of insensitive to bring it up here. Real life syndrome? Well, he's angry one minute and then placid the next. Well, trust me, real life syndrome means you'll find something new to be angry about all over again. I'm looking at my fingernails now, and they're not too short and they're not too long, and the inconsistency is pissing me the fuck off! Yeah, I, I, the fact that Ingrid... Do, is it? No, it's Agnes. Oops. R wrong elderly lady in the Leighton series. You fucking ageist piece of shit. <laughs> she just she just keeps pointing and it just makes me angry. It's rude to point. Main character that way. Just like turn her around depending on which way you want her to point at things. Alright, Agnes, we need you to direct him over here so I'm just gonna rotate you <laughs> here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she probably creaks like that in real life, yeah. <laughs> Okay, stop that. I'm going to lose my shit in a second. <laughs> so, is that like her hair? Is she wearing like a hood or whatever? She's she's wearing a sort of cap thing. Okay, alright. It's old woman apparel. Oh god, now I'm being ageist. Look, I'm just satisfied in knowing both of you are completely terrible, and yet I've emerged scot-free. Okay, Paulie, whatever you say. Is that going to be my new name now? Yes. Well, I suppose it's better than the old Hell Dragon moniker, so I guess I'll go with that. <laughs> Whatever you say, Hell Dragon. This puzzle, uh... <laughs> this puzzle, ignoring THD over there, I kind of struggled with because I couldn't really see where best to pull these things. Uh, I guess I just didn't have a lot of patience back in the day. Well, I mean, the, the fun thing with this particular puzzle is that it is one of the ones that was in the advert because it was used in the advert with Cheryl Cole, or as she is now, Cheryl Fernandez Vicini. Yeah, that that was weird. What an odd choice to represent you. Um... Yeah, but it was there, and it was this very puzzle. So I guess, is this like setting a fence on a budget? Because he's using, like, exactly, what, seven lines to do this? Six? Uh, yeah, I think it's kind of trying to separate all of the pigs with the fewest ropes so that, yeah, you're saving money in the end. Well, it doesn't really work if there's no fence around the pigs to keep them from wandering outside of the area. You ever think about that? That's very true. Now I'm just trying to think of pointer finger jokes for her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I was just going to bring back the uh, British sitcom stuff, because, like, whenever, well, when we were recording, we got to Agnes, and I was just like, why can't she not be Agnes Brown, and then we can just make loads of Mrs. Brown's boys jokes because that show is surprisingly hilarious most of the time. That is like the most divisive sitcom I've heard of in recent years because mm. people who like it love it. Yeah. People who dislike it fucking despise it. it it's really odd because the thing is, is that I think it's 
It's a very old school style sitcom that doesn't take itself very seriously, and I think that's where a lot of people find the charm. But then there's the fact that you've got loads of facking this and facking that, and basically lots of Irish stereotypes, and I'm not sure how people really respond to that too well. If we're going to go for like Irish uh, sitcoms, I would personally go with Father Ted. I think that is definitely the most famous Irish sitcom. Now, Luke, here's a puzzle. The cows in here are small, but the ones out there are far away. <laughs> My mum's favourite scene from that, just before we get off the subject, is the one with, um... Oh, I, I forget who the guy is, but when they're all, like, doing dancing and shit in the caravan. I've never watched Father Ted. <sighs> Fucking Philistines. Sorry. <laughs> You're dead to me, Richie. Dead! Okay, this guy is clearly a Yu-Gi-Oh character. I mean, look at his hair. I'm pretty sure he wants to duel us. Come on. Say goodbye to Exodia! Yeah, yeah, I'm getting that whole uh, Weevil Underwood vibe. So, is he basically Weevil mixed with Jimmy Neutron? Because that's basically Jimmy Neutron's hair. That's true, that's true. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of a weird fusion of the two. This is going to be one of those water-pouring puzzles, if I recall correctly. Oh god, no. Just don't tell Joseph Joestar, alright? We're going to have some problems here. Yes, Crouton, the owner of the restaurant... Mm. So, <clears throat> very unsubtle pun. Uh, he has a bunch of water-pouring oh puzzles. Oh my god, his head is a salt shaker as well. Oh wow, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> I never noticed that before. He might actually be saltier than me. Wow, <laughs> that, that'll be a feat and no mistake. Go on, Richard, what you were saying about his puzzles. Uh, basically, most characters have a set of puzzles. Crouton's is the water-pouring puzzles, as we are going to come into shortly, and they are essentially a variation of the Tower of Hanoi puzzles, mm -hmm. which do turn up... I don't know whether it's exactly in this game, but they definitely turn up in later games in much more normal versions. I mean, I think in Lost Future, there is a series of Pancake Tower of Hanoi puzzles. Yeah, I think I remember that. There's also um, one, I think, like, two-thirds of the way through the game in Professor Layton vs. Ace Turner. Hmm. That sounds about right. I think I encountered a puzzle like this when I played, uh... You guys probably haven't played it, the uh, Island of Dr. Brain, which is like this uh, Sierra PC game that I've thought about recording, you know, a few times here and there, but very also puzzle-based. Uh, I don't think I did very well back then either on those kind of puzzles. Was that the type of game you could play at school? Uh, well, no, we actually had a, uh, uh, like the actual disc and a copy of that. It's a good game, though. I think it still holds up. Another puzzle solved. Nicely done, me. Does he say that when he's doing crosswords? Another puzzle solved. <laughs> Every Sudoku has an answer. No, knowing Leighton, yes, that is exactly what he does every time he finishes a crossword. It's like, yes, thank you, could you hand over the funnies? It's either that, or critical thinking is the key to success. Although, I used to actually really like trying to solve the uh, cryptograms. You know, in the newspaper when I was little, I haven't tried it in a while, obviously, but that tends to be one of my more favorite kind of puzzles. A, a memory has just, at this second, come back to me. You know word searches, right? You know how a word search works? Yeah. The very first time I did a word search, in infant school, I believe it was, instead of, like, finding the word in the thing, I looked for the letters individually to try and spell out a word. Like an S from that side of the grid, then I take an A oh. from over here. I had no <laughs> idea about the concepts of fucking word searches, so I just made up my own rules for it. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. Yeah, what happened? <sighs> <laughs> Polly is sorry. Polly better be sorry, otherwise we're going to introduce him to I'm Adria. about to knock Polly the fuck out if he don't shut his mouth, is what you're trying to say. Well, no, we, we will just introduce him to Adria, a.k.a. the worst character oh, no, in the entire no. village. I, I apologize right now. I'm very sorry, Tom. I don't want to have to deal with Adria. <laughs> I think Adria is basically the only character that Leighton openly insults. 
in the entire game. Not even insults, he just gets a little bit irate. That should do it. Well, no, but he's, he, he does basically say, in some words, no, shut the hell up, young lady. No, more like, who do you think you are, young lady? Well, that, that that's probably more accurate to what he says, but the meaning is shut the hell up. And that's how you turn a triangle from facing up to facing down. Mm-hmm. I look forward to applying that somehow. Also, I think that this guy, so he's called Nick in the UK version. I think he's called Flick in the American version. There are a few characters whose names changed for some reason. Yeah, this is a thing that you guys in America probably won't notice, but me, like, recording games over and over, I sometimes encounter the US version, I sometimes encounter the UK version, so I tend to notice these differences a lot more. Like, the final boss of Splatoon's single-player campaign, for example, and I guess throughout, but I didn't really notice any throughout, there are regional differences. Like, in the, the UK version of the final boss, he'll be like, oh, I'm going to hurt you, but, uh... In the US version, he's gonna be—he's like, or I'll remix your face. Yeah, that seems actually kind of a bit more distinct. At least it's not something like I'll harm you. <laughs> Which is weird because Europe is the, usually the localization team that has a little bit of fun with stuff, and America is more the straight-laced one. So I guess that was just the exception to the rule. I mean, insert your splatfest joke here about European and American splatfest. <laughs> Man, the European branch is uh, kind of letting the side down, but uh, I digress. Don't drink water if you see germs that large inhabiting it. <laughs> God, definitely. I love the build-up to this, where they find this filthy jar. He goes, this filthy jar reminds me of the puzzle. I'm like, Leighton, somebody probably pissed in that. Come on. It's green. Might want to see a doctor. Correct, somebody did piss in this. This is actually a sort of slightly mean puzzle, because the way that you figure it out, you get to it's essentially 60 minutes, but you've got to think that there are already, I think, one or two germs at the beginning, so you've got to knock off a minute for it to be correct. Don't stick your hand in the jar! Um, it, it, it's a different jar than the puzzle jar! Oh, thank god! Luke, you fucking do it. <laughs> also, ew. Oh, yeah. That, that's been outside where it's going to have rained at some point. Yeah, when you build that painting, there's going to be like a big yellow splat on it because somebody left that outside in the sun. Luke, why don't you try talking to her again? Maybe that'll work. You know, just try to repair that breakup you had earlier. This, like, instance of having to get an item to use on a thing to make it all, like, friendly and whatnot is very much like an adventure game, as you mentioned earlier, Hell Dragon. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's ve the Lane series has been always pretty light on the traditional adventure game tropes, but these days, you know, adventure games tend to follow a more narrative path anyway. Although there isn't really, like, the branching decisions that tends to be very popular with those other adventure games. But again, it's mostly focused on the puzzle and the uh, story. But well, I mean, I guess the reason for that is because the Layton series is very much geared towards being accessible to people. Like, I mean, it is geared more towards a younger audience. I mean, you look at the character designs and all of that. It does kind of exude, this is a game for a younger player. But because of the way that it is designed, it is open to anybody playing. But it's just, and because it is open to anybody playing, it's accessible to also they don't want to go too bullshit on some of the puzzles and some of the ways of getting through things. Now, a house of puzzles is open for any puzzle on sale, half off and below. Visit us today to see our fine stock of puzzles here and now. It's terrible. Polly's broken in. <laughs> he's so angry. <laughs> the chandeliers. He's just yelling at them. Make him stop. Is Polly like Grandpa Simpson? Does he yell at the sky? I want to see him do that. You know, Polly yells at Cloud. Bring me that, please. Matthew, Matthew, I hate to break this to you, man, but humans cannot fly. I'll take off eventually. That's my dream. Una Paloma Blanca. I'm just a bird in the sky. The last shot of the game is just Matthew flying away in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Inspector Charmy. I love this guy. 
Oh, Chelmy is easily one of the greatest characters in this series. It's br- he's just brilliant. I, I never realised this until now, and I guess I should have because it's really obvious. You know how I said Leighton is an idealised version of Phoenix Row? Mm. Mm-hmm. Look at what Chelmy is wearing, specifically the colour of, yeah. his, of his coat. Can you think of a character in the Phoenix Wright series who has a similar shade? Gumshoe. Yep. Except uh, this particular gumshoe is a bit more sophisticated. A very interesting stance he's taking on. Like, what is going on with his shoulders there? I don't get that. <laughs> Shouldn't be laughing. I'm sorry. Someone's been killed here. That it, it, It's gone morbid. And Well, if it was a clown, it'd be funny, wouldn't it? Uh, people die all the time in, like, Phoenix Wright games, and they are like, oh, mayor, ha ha, hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> what? Oh, it can switch from morbid to jovial at the drop of the hat. Richie did say these were very accessible games. Also, we are never going to see Simon again, because he is obviously dead. Oh, man, we had such great memories with that guy, like that one puzzle we did. And that little smug little expression he had on his face, which I will treasure forever, now that he's dead and I don't have to look at it anymore. <laughs> Listen, uh, uh, Chumley, uh, I know we just met, but some yoga will clear that back problem right up, you know, just straighten up, your posture will improve, it'll look great. No chiropractor can remove the weight from my shoulders, which is the weight of the world. I'm trying to solve a murder related. Yeah, the weight of Scotland Yard, I'm pretty sure nobody can remove that burn. It's so very, very hot in here. Ah, Gordon, he just kind of sits here and gives you puzzles. He never moves. Ever. I don't think he can. <laughs> I should be laughing. I was expect no, Richie. The way you phrased your sentence, the way you said it, the words coming out of your mouth, you were so dying to make a fat joke, and then Hell, Hell Dragon just goes ahead and throws one out there. <laughs> well, I, I, I wasn't where I was going with it, but I mean, Hell Dragon. I, I took one of Hell Dragon's jokes, so he can take what was potentially one of mine. <laughs> and remember, it's okay for me to say this. I used to be fat too. I'm still working on it. It's a process. Are you sure about that? Because Simon doesn't really seem like buddy-buddy. Just, you know, I-, I didn't know him for long, but I didn't want to know him for very long, you know what I'm saying? Gordon's stick is that he wants to start a family. Alright. I'm not going to touch that. Not with Leighton. Not like that. He just wants to find his special woman. Hmm. I mean, it- the thing is, is that he would do a much better job if, you know, he left his spot, which he never leaves. It's not even a case of being a shut-in, he just never moves from that one spot. That's true, women tend to gather in areas that are not directly inside the same house you've been in forever. I really have a thing for guys with idol animations who have more than 50 frames. I mean, the, the other thing is, he doesn't even live here. At least I don't think he technically lives here, or at least he shouldn't live here, and yet somehow he does. He's of the Reinhold clan, isn't he? Yes, I think so. Well, I think he was what? Uh, I would just... nephew or brother? <laughs> yeah, just keep looking up male relations, I'm sure you'll hit the right one eventually. I mean, it can't be uncle, but... yeah. See, I love it where they're just like, oh, well, thank you for solving that puzzle, but we still sort of don't know who the killer is, so could you work on that? Just like, that should be the only puzzle within Leighton's consciousness at the moment. It's called Focus, dude. You'll notice we're not actually in Chapter 3 yet. I'm not sure how the later Leighton games dealt with this stuff, but there's like a little intermission period between chapters in Curious Village, and... I think when we were recording this, Richard, we just decided we'll do, like, the chapter and everything, like, up to the next chapter, and that can just be one video. Yeah, I mean, it made sense. I'm pretty sure that in the later Leighton games, one chapter concludes, another begins immediately. I don't know whether it happened right in Pandora's box, or whether it was a thing that was introduced in Lost Future, but it certainly is a thing that happened after this game. 
I mean, the thing is, is that they really did improve almost every single facet of the series come Pandora's box, because I think they realised what worked and what didn't, and then ran with it. Well, I mean, it, 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 it's a cock, and... I mean, it kind of is very, very similar to the it's the stonemasons logo thingy, isn't it? It might be. I don't. I, I was expecting Tom to feel that one. I don't know anything. What are you talking about? Why would I know about the stonemasons? What are you trying to say? I, I don't know. Maybe you had something you wanted to tell the rest of us. <laughs> what I was going to bring up was the one faction from series three of gargoyles. The. Uh... Weren't those also stone cutters? Or the the the, the 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 masons? I'm trying to remember. It's been so long since I've seen that. Oh, uh, it's the Freemasons. Freemasons. Yeah, there we go. That's what I mean. And it's nothing like that at all. At all. So we just spent the last couple of minutes rambling about nothing that made sense. That tends to be the typical thing when I do a commentary, yeah. <laughs> Look, alright, we've been talking for 50 fucking minutes straight. You can forgive us if the last five minutes were a bit dopey. I blame the bloody cat. It's all her fault. It usually is. Cats uh, cats tend to have no sense of right or wrong. Well, chapter 2 is a bit of an anomaly in that that's literally all you're doing. In the others, you're at least advancing the plot in some fashion. It's very telling that all the major story development happened during the intermission between chapters uh, 2 and 3. Hmm, definitely. It is kind of weird to have filler this early in the game, but as long as the rest of the game keeps on cooking, that's fine. I mean, it, it's odd, because I think that the way that the game ends up working is that chapter 2 ends up being really the only major fillery part and, I mean, its entire point in terms of the plot is to get Leighton away from the manor so that they can kill off Simon and kick everything else into gear. The rest of the chapters are much more involved with Leighton doing stuff rather than being removed from the action for a period of time. Do you think he has candy in his pockets? Because I'm suddenly in that mood. What, are we talking about Chelmere? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he doesn't really seem like a can uh, candy guy. I bet he's got, like, broccoli and gruel in his pockets. He's very dour like that. It's almost over, guys. <laughs> I believe uh, he should probably have, oh god, uh, his wife's fresh cakes, I think, maybe? I'm not 100% sure. That gets brought up later, I think. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Listen, Matthew, there's two minutes left. Could you help me out here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just going to relax after this grievous murder that just happened. No, no, I think I'm going to take some shut-eye for a bit. Oh, if a murder happened in my house, I could tell you a list of places where I would much prefer napping in than the, the house where the murder took place. That's true, yeah. People in this town have no common sense, it seems. I believe it. <laughs> well, it was completely true, though, Luke. Just gonna warn you ahead of time, but still. You were totally on the ball. Not very gentleman-like behavior. Well, I never said I was. <laughs> God, I wish I could go downstairs. Can't you see I'm chewing here? Dahlia, fretting variant. Is that a rare one you can get? Yes, it's a holofoil and all that good <laughs> shit. <laughs> I can't find this amiibo in stores, what's going on? <laughs> Golden Dahlia. <laughs> There's only a hundred. Oh my god, please, please, please let there be a latent amiibo at some point. Oh yes, I'm going after that good shit. Uh, that would be interesting, I wonder what that would be used for, exactly. More Layton games on the 3DS? I guess you need the little add-on stand? Professor Layton in Smash Brothers. No, it wouldn't work. He can use a sword, he'd be fine. Well, because of that one sequence, alright, then put him in Smash, you know, perfectly fine. Let's not think about this or anything. Entire franchise. <laughs> the next Fire Emblem character, the Lord, Professor Layton. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a fucking sword too, I just realized that, oh man. 
Okay, let's do a little bit of a recap since this has been such a long part. Cat lost. Cat found. Uh, murder. Simon lost life. <laughs> Simon lost life. <laughs> Cock found. Shelby turned up. There you go, I've summed up 15 minutes in under 10 seconds. Just get the footnotes of this part ahead of time next time. <laughs> okay, guys, that'll do it for this particular chapter. We'll see you next time when the plot hopefully starts to pick up. <laughs>